Debbie Rowe The dermatology assistant best known for her short-lived marriage to the king of pop, Michael Jackson. A union most notable for the birth of his first two children, as well as accelerating paparazzi and tabloid interrogation into every intimate detail of Michael Jackson's personal life and relationships. At the time, widespread opinion of their surprise wedding was that it was a publicity stunt and a marriage of convenience, only adding to a whirlwind of cynicism and speculation that already haunted Michael Jackson's public image during the 1990s. But with hindsight, what can be declared as fact or fiction? Was Debbie in it purely for the fame and money? Was Jackson orchestrating a thinly veiled PR move gone wrong? Or were the two longtime companions grossly misrepresented and genuinely shared mutual affections and heartfelt intentions? We've got the detail. Michael Jackson and Debbie Rowe first met in 1986, while Rowe was working as an assistant for Jackson's dermatologist, Dr. Arnold Klein as Michael had recently been diagnosed with lupus and vitiligo. The 27-year-old blonde supported Jackson, providing answers concerning his medical conditions, and as a result, the pair became good friends. The pop star frequently sent autographed merchandise to the young medical assistant, who proudly hung them on the walls of her office. According to her friend Tanya Boyd, Roe would obsess over Jackson. She would say, quote, If people knew him like I knew him, they would not think he was strange. He's unique and kinky, actually. The Jackson Rowe friendship would last for several years, during which Rowe divorced Richard Eidelman, a man she claimed to have felt trapped by. Rowe and Jackson would often talk to each other about their bad luck in love and unhappy marriages, hers with Eidelman, and then years later, Jackson with Lisa Marie Presley. Like Michael Jackson's first wife, Rose supported the entertainer when he was accused of child sexual abuse in 1993. And once married, Jackson kept his friendship with Rowe a secret from his new life. However, Presley eventually found out, but thought nothing of it as she felt Rowe was in no way her husband's type because of her plain appearance and unglamorous attire. However, tensions grew between Michael and Lisa Marie as she became increasingly unsure of their relationship and avoided at all costs a potential child custody battle with Jackson by putting off getting pregnant with the child Jackson so desperately craved for. While speaking on the phone together, Debbie Rowe's response to Michael's upset at the possibility that he might never become a father was to, on numerous occasions, offer to birth the pop singer a child of his own. An offer Presley soon became all too aware of as Jackson continued to pile on the pressure, ultimately resulting in their separation. In an interview with Playboy, Lisa Marie said that she knew while married to Jackson that Roe wanted to have his children and that Roe had a crush on him. Shortly after the public were informed of Jackson and Presley's breakup in early 1996, Roe became pregnant but suffered a miscarriage in that March. The event devastated Roe, who feared that she would never be able to have a baby. Jackson comforted and consoled Roe throughout the ordeal, which remained hidden from the media and public. In September 1996, Michael Jackson embarked on the first leg of his His to Re World Tour. Several months after his divorce from Presley and one month into the tour, Jackson's personal life made headlines as it was revealed that Roe was pregnant with his child. Roe reacted furiously and complained that they reported the story as if she and Jackson were freaks. However, it was later revealed to have been pretty accurate, detailing that Jackson was the father of the baby and that he would be raising the child alone. The article also stated that Roe was artificially impregnated with sperm cells, a quote, foolproof method of insemination. In recent years, Roe has stated that she never had sex with Jackson and their children were conceived in a medical office. Quote, they impregnated me. It's just like I impregnate my mares for breeding. It was very technical. I was as thoroughbred, Roe said. Further reports alleged that the relationship was an economic one that Roe was in it for financial compensation, and that Jackson agreed in order to have his own child. Upon hearing these assumptions, Michael Jackson made statements condemning the accusation that they have an economic relationship, and used artificial insemination as, quote, completely false and irresponsible. Despite his denials, it has since been revealed that Roe did in fact receive millions of dollars from Jackson as gifts over the years. Among court papers filed against Jackson in 2002 by business manager Myung Ho Lee, a monthly budget for Jackson was detailed and included a $1.5 million payment to Roe. 
As Jackson and Roe never lived together, the King of Pop also bought his longtime friend a $1.3 million home in 1997. However, when news of the pregnancy broke to Jackson's mother, Catherine, the family matriarch was horrified and urged her son to wed the mother of his unborn child. Deeply religious, Catherine was pained to think that her son was emulating his father, who had produced an illegitimate child with a woman during their marriage. As a result, Catherine spoke on the telephone to Debbie about the sanctity of marriage and the Jehovah's Witness faith. She then later spoke to Michael, telling him to marry that nice girl, Debbie, and, quote, give your child a name, not like your poor half-sister, John Vonnie. His mother's words resonated with the entertainer, who was sickened by the comparison and was strongly against repeating his father's sins. Prior to Catherine's involvement, the view had been for Roe to act as a surrogate mother. She would give the baby to Jackson as a friendly favor, and he would raise it. But now, spurred on by Catherine and paranoid of receiving any kind of backlash for having a child out of wedlock, Jackson called Roe and asked her to meet him in Australia. Once there, the entertainer announced his plans for them to wed the next day. On November 13th, 1996, Michael Jackson and Debbie Rowe wed at the Sheraton on the Park Hotel in Sydney, Australia. The night before the wedding, Jackson called Presley, who gave him and Rowe her blessing. In front of 15 friends, the pair exchanged vows at the hotel and Jackson's eight-year-old nephew, Anthony, served as best man during the ceremony. The press and public reaction to the marriage was overwhelmingly negative and cynical. Several commentators believed Jackson was marrying a person he did not love and speculated that Roe was having a baby which wasn't biologically Jackson's. Speculation about the wedding continues, especially after Jackson refused to comment on his marriage. How does it feel to be married, Michael? He must be very happy. Is it a happy day for you? Are you very pleased? <laughs> Michael confirms the marriage, but has asked for privacy at this special time. The news has left some fans broken-hearted. Michael, I think it's a setup. She's pregnant. My life is over. To counteract negative press attention over their marriage, Michael Jackson made the statement, quote, Debbie and I love each other for all the things you'll never see on stage or in pictures. I fell for the beautiful, unpretentious, giving person that she is. And she fell for me just being me. Jackson and Rose's first child together, Michael Joseph Jackson Jr., was born on February 13, 1997, at Cedar Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. The baby was nicknamed after Michael's grandfather and great grandfather, who were both called Prince. After Roe and Jackson cut the baby's umbilical cord together, Prince was taken to intensive care where he spent five hours with only minor breathing problems. He was subsequently taken by his father to Neverland Ranch while the baby's mother recuperated at a friend's house upon her release from the hospital. Six weeks later, Rose saw her son for the first time since birth, having agreed to posing for photographs with Jackson and their newborn son at a hotel. Rose was cautious about becoming too attached to Prince, as she felt it would make her situation harder to deal with. Upon arriving, Roe was ushered into the hotel room, where she was given the infant to hold and told to smile for the camera with Michael. After the shots were taken, she was quickly sent on her way. At Neverland, Prince was cared for by a team of six nannies and six nurses during his first few months. According to one nanny who worked at the Californian ranch, Prince's mother was not a significant presence in the child's early life. Quote, I saw her maybe three times, and she seemed very sullen. However, despite Rose's awkwardly distant role, it was announced that the married couple were again pregnant with their second child in November 1997. The baby was to be a girl, and already named Paris, after the French city in which her parents said she was conceived. However, during Rose's second pregnancy, rumors broke that Michael and Lisa Marie had rekindled their relationship, as they were photographed together numerous times in London, South Africa, and Los Angeles. The divorced couple's public affection for each other ignited rumors that Michael Jackson was openly having an affair with Presley while still married to Roe, and that the former couple were planning to get remarried in Johannesburg, South Africa, despite the singer already having a wife who was pregnant with his child. The awkward love triangle played out on television, when Debbie publicly denied feeling threatened by the friendship that she had no reason to believe Jackson wasn't remaining faithful to her. 
However, later in the interview, she stated that their friendship was the most important thing to her, and if marriage would get in the way of that, then they'll put the marriage to his side, but she wanted to remain his friends. Despite this public turmoil on April 3rd, 1998, a healthy, blue-eyed Paris Michael Catherine Jackson was born. Jackson later claimed that he was so anxious following the birth of his daughter that he snatched her and ran straight home, quote, with all the placenta and everything all over her. However, Roe later confirmed that Jackson had the placenta frozen. Following the birth, Jackson's associates contacted Pope John Paul II at the Vatican in Rome in the hope that the pontiff would personally baptize the pop star's daughter. An official for the Pope informed Jackson by letter that the leader of the Catholic Church would not participate in what may be perceived as a publicity stunt. After the birth of Paris, a pregnancy that was littered with problems and left her unable to have any more children, Roe became increasingly unsatisfied with their arrangement and asked Jackson for a divorce, which he granted on October 8, 1999. As a result, Roe received around $10 million as a divorce settlement and gave Jackson full custody rights to her children. At the time, both Roe and Jackson requested privacy and asked the public not to speculate on the reasons for their divorce, citing mounting media speculation and press intrusion as a primary factor for their marriage breakdown. They concluded that despite coming to the end of married life, they would continue to remain friends. <laughs> 